Okay, all you novice dry suit divers out there, you're probably wondering why I'm holding a piece of wax and sitting on my dry suit. Well, what I'm gonna do is apply the wax along the zipper so that this thing opens and closes easily, okay? What you wanna do is take the wax like this and apply onto the zipper, making sure you get it inside all of the metal teeth. And the reason that we do that is because a dry suit zipper gets very, very corroded and worn down after diving, especially if you're diving in the ocean, you get salt particles attacking the metal, you get sand in there, you get grit. Especially here in Iceland, we have a lot of um, volcanic dust and stuff like that. Don't be shy, put it on there, get it into the metal areas, and that's gonna help your zip open and close really smoothly and efficiently. The last thing you want to do is have this zip break because uh, you're gonna get wet fast. And uh, if you have to repair this zipper, it's very, very expensive. And just by doing this waxing, you can really keep the suit well maintained. Here in Iceland, we have a lot of volcanic ash and dirt, sand particles, and it gets all inside the zipper. So we generally kind of wash it out with fresh water and then apply the wax. Um, you know, every time we feel like it, or if the if the wax, if the um, if the zipper feels stiff and uh, rusty or corroded, you put the the wax on again, and you just put some new life into the zipper. And then, just to get this going, we zip the zip along the wax. You can see how easy I'm doing that now. How easy that is. Okay guys, here in Iceland we use a DIN regulator setup. And if you're not, uh, not used to a DIN regulator setup, it's basically when this part of the regulator screws into the tank valve. Can you see that? Just bring it in closer here. So you can see here is the male end and it screws in to the female end, which is the valve here, okay? There's a washer, you turn the washer like that and it fixes the regulator in position. Now the benefits of diving with DIN setup is that you're not going to have an O-ring blow out from the tank and that's very common when you're using an A-clamp. We get a lot of tropical divers bringing their equipment here with the A-clamp setup and as soon as they turn the air on and we go diving, we have O-rings blowing out, we have hissing, we have lots of complications. So the DIN regulator really is the only way to dive here in Iceland. When we're diving with the dry suit setup, usually we'd use all of our BCD for the buoyancy, okay? It's very rare that dry suit divers use their, their dry suits um, for the main buoyancy, okay? So this is really the workhorse under the water. We use the dry suit really just to stay warm and stay comfortable. When we get squeezed and we can't breathe anymore, we put some air in like this and we can breathe again. And that's really the best way to use your dry suit. If you're new to dry suit diving, don't let anybody tell you that, um, you know, just stick to the dry suit, stick to the dry suit. That's not good advice because what happens is you're putting too much air into the dry suit, migrating to your legs and up you go like Superman. I'm now gonna show you a doll that I use to demonstrate that. You've got a bag of air surrounding the body. And to demonstrate this, we've got a spirit level on the back and inside you've got a bubble, okay? Now when we're diving, there's two ways to dive. There's descending straight down from the surface, okay? You can see, hello, going down like this, and then the diving position itself, which is the prone position, all right? Now, you can watch the bubble on the back here. Can you zoom in on the bubble? Just watch what happens when the diver starts to, you know, see a turtle and he gets excited. Oh, there's a turtle! Aha! <laughs> the bubble goes to the back, migrates to the feet, and up it goes like this. It happens in a second. So the most important uh, rule in dry suit diving is we never dive down. We never allow our head to go below our feet because we get what's called a feet first ascent and it's an absolute nightmare for dry suit divers, okay? So underwater, the regulator setup is as follows, okay? This is a seven feet hose, and this one is worn around my body like this with the regulator in my mouth, okay? Um, my backup is worn on a necklace, okay? 
and it goes like this and you wear that here. In a situation where, excuse me, in a situation where you have a diver that is low on air or out of air, the regulator comes over my head and is given to the diver, okay? My backup is on a necklace here, so I can simply look down and pick up the regulator with my teeth, quickly put it in like that. And the benefit of having this set up is that you're not working with short hoses that restrict your ability to give the air to somebody. So for example, I can give that to you and kind of push you back from me seven feet away and uh, I'll always have uh, a backup for me uh, and that is my redundancy. This hose here, this is my uh, primary regulator. This is also the one I donate because it's on a long hose. The black is under my neck on this uh, necklace where it needs to be. Um, wing setup is just what I prefer. BCD is gone in the age of the dinosaurs. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So, uh, let's get diving, guys. All right. Dry gloves. There you go. Some people use wet gloves. I use dry gloves. I like my hands to be dry. The problem with dry gloves is if they leak. If they leak, your dive is finished. At least with a wet glove, you know, your hand is wet anyway. Um, these are are the same gloves you can use to do your washing up with. They're just a little thicker. Uh, I can clip them into this suit here. Underneath I have a woolly, uh, a woolly glove inside. So uh, when I finish the dive my hand is cold but it's not wet. Um, when you finish a dive with wet gloves your hands will be wet cold instead of dry cold. And uh, I find that feeling intolerable. Thermal protection. We're going to start with the base layer. This is the the light by wall power, really nice. And this stops me from shivering. If you don't wear a base layer, you're an idiot. So make sure you wear one. Next is the mid layer. Okay, a lot of divers forget the mid layer because they think it's all about being a big puffy snowman. Well, let me tell you, if you don't wear the mid layer, eventually you will get cold and then you start to shiver. That's not good. So a mid layer is also an effective way to fight the cold off your body and you don't want to have it too thick. Like that, mid layer. Merino wool, Ugh. merino wool. Really comfortable, stretchy, nice. And socks, socks are so important in dry suit diving. I cannot bang on about socks enough. And I wear just a normal pair of socks there, cheap socks, just to create a layer. And then I put these really, really thick merino socks over the top and they come up all the way to the calf muscle okay because this really is a heat zone your ankle is a heat zone and uh, if you don't protect your ankles you'll find that you lose heat quite quickly we've already waxed this dry suit before you can see how easy it is to open that now okay very very easy if we put the dry suit on it's good to stand against or stand or lean against something Put your weight against something. You don't want to be toppling over, falling over in your dry suit, damaging it. That's the last thing you want to do. So lean against something, take the weight, and then you're going to do one leg at a time, like so. Make sure, very, very important, make sure your braces are outside the right leg because sometimes people put it through this way, they go into the other leg, and they end up making a big tangle and uh, it feels like an octopus. So make sure you get the right leg and the right boot and have your braces outside ready to be put onto your body. And put the dry suit in like this. That feels secure. And then locate the other boot. Again, bring the brace out to the outside. Place the foot inside the dry suit. Lean your weight against something, as I've discussed. Push your legs all the way inside. Before you do that, bring the braces up into position. Okay. Pull it up from here. And then you can put your braces on like this. That's it. Okay. And now you're ready to get into the dry suit. Now I'm going to put the dry suit on. Make sure that you're not wearing any rings or watches because that is easily going to rip the latex material on here. Okay. You've got a neat little thing here, you can put your thumb through here so this stops that from sliding up. 
you find the wrist seal, okay, like that, and then just make sure the thumb loop comes over. Push through like that, nice and slowly. So just let it happen naturally. Okay, that's one. Again, put your thumb through here to stop that sliding up. Put it back in. And what you want to do is make a nice flush wrist seal on the suit. Okay, you don't want to have it rolled up on the sides. It needs to be flush. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. you see how flush that is and flat. If it's like this, okay, that's no good. That's going to make uh, a leak. As soon as you start using your hand like this, water's going to flow back in. Okay, so ensure that the wrist seal is nice and flat like that. Okay. Then you can get into the suit itself when you do that. Okay, you locate the seal, okay, like that. Put your hands inside, okay? Don't just do this. Don't do this, okay? If you do this, you're gonna break it. Don't do that. Find the hole with your hands, take a good grip. If you're claustrophobic, close your eyes. If you're not, don't worry about it. Put your head inside the suit and then gently push it. Gently, carefully put the suit on like that. Make sure that the neck is nicely flush with the seal like that. Then you're ready to be zipped up, okay? Probably quite still. Okay. So what I do is I hold the suit like that and I close it as I go, yeah? So left hand holds the suit, the right hand draws the zipper across, okay? And you just work the suit gently like this. Make sure you tuck in any fabric that's poking out like that. It's nice and slowly like that, all the way along. Again, tuck this in, you don't want to get that caught. And we're gonna do this slowly, sit slowly. And then coming around to this side, you see this? This is very important, when you do this, you're going to finish off the dry suit and guarantee that it's pulled all the way. Give it one, two, three, like that. And you can even show the diver. Let him visualize it, look. Let him see it like that. And that makes certain that the dry suit is closed, okay? Uh, you can degas the suit. This is what we do just before we go diving, is we let all of the excess air out of the suit by just putting a little hole in the top of the neck seal and bending down, squatting all of the air out of the suit like this. So it's much easier to descend. We're also gonna open, fully open, the dry suit valve, okay? A lot of people will say, have it closed when you start, but you know, a lot of divers forget to reset their valve, so we generally dive with it fully open, which is a hands-free mode. You're ready to concentrate on what you're doing, okay? kg and getting one in and out of the water is not easy so be very careful you need to have a training day with these going to a swimming pool you know it's always good done some damage to the right ear it's just kind of clogged up uh, this is what we do guys um, another, another day in the office. Every day yeah. is a learning experience, you know. The scooters, for me, it's like yeah, like a rabid wild dog yeah. being strapped to a wild Alsatian. I would have one day of training in the swimming pool first before you attempt to come out here. Uh, you know, we do this professionally. This is another day in the office for us, but um, ideally we would have liked to have gone in the swimming pool first with these machines. Um, not uh, walk the, the Rottweiler on the golf course, you know, <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> because 
is uh, it, it is a powerful machine, yeah. so you need to be careful. But um, we hope you've enjoyed the video. We've done some drone footage, um, some nice gear setup uh, filming, and the, the underwater bits. So we hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, comments and shares below. Um, if you like clear water diving, you want to see some amazing visibility, uh, check out the Purist Dive link right here. And uh, you can click this link and you can check out our other video, The Purist Dive. Um, and uh, enjoy. All from us, I think. Yeah. Okay. All good. Signing off. Yeah, signing off. See you later. Good luck.